With central bankers finally admitting that inflation is running hotter than they expected, supply chain constraints and structural shortages of commodities, hard assets have never been more attractive. But which ones? Metals like silver and their miners have historically been favorites in these environments. And this time around, the global push for electrification means that over the next decade, demand is set to dramatically outpace supply. This means that producers are hungry for high quality silver assets in a world where fewer and fewer scalable projects are being found. For decades, David Morgan, author of The Morgan Report, has been analyzing the precious metals industry for hedge funds, high net worth investors, and mining companies. And here he explains why he has never been more bullish on silver. All right, well, what have we seen over the last few months in the silver market? And let's take that further into context of what happened in 2020. Well, the last few months have been consolidating. Silver's fallen off uh, the $28 level. It was in a channel formation from basically January for several months. Uh, that was sort of the time that the Wall Street Silver Reddit subgroup came into the fore. And they went from, I forget exactly, 30,000 people to, I think it's now 120,000. So lots of new awareness in the silver market, but like all markets, silver goes up and down. It's hit a low of about 2150 basis to spot month, and it's bounced up. It's over 24 now. And longer term, it's really, uh, I'm still very bullish on it for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into later. Last comment is 2020 started off with a bang uh, at the, uh, World Economic Forum, uh, <clears throat> the leading chief investment officer, Scott Maynard, mentioned silver as his like best pick for 2020. And uh, the most institutional purchases of physical silver took place in 2020. And I know I'm in the wrong year. So in 2021 is when the Wall Street silver crowd came to the fore and has been going strong ever since until this last few months where it's consolidated. <laughs> All right, so what's really driving the silver market retail or is it institutional? It's really three-sided because we have to put in the industrial supply or demand. So we've had the biggest demand that we've ever seen in the silver market, both retail and institutional in 2020. About 330 million ounces from institutions and about 200 million from retail. So that's 530, 540 million ounces. We only mine about 850. So this is more than that the industrial side takes and the industrial side is 55% of the market now with about 850 million ounces being mined. If you go back two decades, we're only mining 550 million ounces and industrial use was 35% of the market. So you can do the arithmetic. So now we've increased 300 million ounces in the last two decades and the percentage has gone up from 35 to 55%. That trend will continue and it's projected that in another decade, silver will be at about 80, 85% industrial use alone. Well, now that we have the awareness of silver in, let's say more retail than ever, it's a global market, not just a North America phenomena that we saw in the late 79, 1980, you can imagine the kind of pressure. And lastly, not only institutions, the retail side and industrial use, we also have all kinds of factors that point toward hard assets, meaning an overblown stock market, a bond market that's losing surety, meaning you know the safest thing in the world is a bond. I differ with that opinion, but regardless of what the market tells us, but that's starting to slough off now. So you're starting to see a lot of factors that are super synergistic for the silver market. And those that are awake and aware right now that can get in, I would say under $30 US, looking out five, especially 10 years, will probably be extremely happy by putting a portion of their investment into the silver market. Anything electrical or electronic uses silver, and we're kind of in the electronic age. I think everybody's aware of that. I mean, if you go back again, maybe two decades and you know, cell phones were around and people had them, but they're little flip phones and where they are now, it's basically everyone's walking around with a computer. So you've got that and that will continue. In fact, 5G, I did a quick back the envelope look. If you have to get a new phone for the 5G system, 
that alone will put a pretty good demand on the silver market. Of course, most people that are even have a cursory idea about silver knows that it's used in photovoltaics, better known as solar panels. But where's it coming from for the projection I gave you, where it could be 80, 85% of the market? That's in 3D printing, actually, uh, where you can print on paper or another material very fine amounts of silver that uh, are required for electrical conduct you know, conduction and that type of thing. Also, the, believe it or not, the clothing industry uses more and more silver for a couple reasons, uh, bio side. So, you know, your clothes don't stink for a while, your gym clothes, but they also have uh, properties for like diabetics and things that most people don't even have any awareness of. On top of that, the EV market, the electric vehicle market, those are going to take a massive amount of silver and RFID readers and on and on it goes and probably three or four things that neither one of us know at this particular time. So the trend is very clear. You get into robotics, you get into that type of thing, more and more and more silver will be demanded on the industrial side. Well, we talked about ounces. Now we should talk about the shares. So if you go back to one of the first things I wrote in the public domain, it's called the 10 Rules of Silver Investing. It's in the Investing Rules book. You can look it up for verification. And in that uh, 10 rules, I said you can gain leverage by, you know, make your dollars go further or leverage if you use mining shares. And the thing about the mining shares is they are super volatile. They're about a three to one ratio in most cases, which means if you get a 10% move in a silver, you'll get a 30% move in a top tier cash rich unhedged mining company as an example. But the converse is also true. If you get a slugging of a 10% down move in silver, you're probably going to see the shares go off 30% or so. The idea being that there is a leverage in silver you don't even see in gold, and there's a lot of gold leverage in a gold mining share. Let me explain. At the top of the market, a good gold producer will sell at 30 times earnings. In fact, that's one of the ideas I'll be looking for to call the top of the market the next time. But a good silver company will sell at 50 times earnings. So there's just a lot of leverage in the silver space when it comes to the mining shares. But again, it's volatile. It goes up and down. And what we do with my work is we look at the top tier, the mid tier, and speculative uh, portfolios. There's three in the Morgan Report. And you can mix and match conservative hedge funds. High net worth people usually just stick to the top tier. Uh, more aggressive investors, younger, usually are in the mid-tier, top tier, maybe a couple speculations. And then there's always those rare individuals that are just basically gamblers by nature, and they want to hit that 10-bagger, 20-bagger, 30-bagger. But when you're in that space, you got to bet a little to win a lot and really manage your money carefully. So the mid-tier are my favorite place to do analysis. Why? Because our mid-tiers, for the most part, not in every case, are companies that are producers, but they have upside that the production can be more efficient or it can increase in volume. And in, again, in a lot of cases, they have exploration potential alongside what they've already started producing. So for an example, company XYZ Mining might be producing at a rather modest level, plans to maybe triple over the next five years, but they also have a lot of potential on that project, or maybe another one they own in a different jurisdiction. And they have now cash flow that they can use without diluting the shareholders and go out and explore it. And in some of these cases, what they discover might be very beneficial to shareholders. So that's kind of a model I love to have. They don't appear too often, but when they do, they're usually worth having an investment in. And on the speculations, the hardest part of the market is sort of in my old man view, you know, it's part of the industry. It's bittersweet. I mean, too many investors that are unsophisticated get the idea from some kind of ad copy that all I have to do is buy some secret mine in the middle of Idaho that's only moose pasture and they're the only one that's going to know about it. It's going to go from two cents to 200 bucks. And, you know, it goes on and on. And I'm hyping it a little bit. But some of these ads read almost that well. And they're so well written. Even I want to invest in them. And half the time I know what the companies are without them giving me the name. The point is you can make money there, but you got to be very careful. I 
you know, we've talked about equities, we've talked about the physical market, industrial, and everything we've covered. Is there anything else to mention? I think there is. I think the awareness of what's going on in the financial markets, not reflecting the general physical economy. And there's nothing more needed than the commodity sector. I mean, let's face it, what's in the commodity sector? Well, there's foodstuffs, right? And then there's what's called the softs, which is like cocoa, but cotton, you know, what we wear. And then you go into the, you know, energy sector with oil and natural gas. Uh, so everything in the commodities region is needed except for what's on the commodities exchanges in leverage form, which are your financials. And we all, most of us listening to this would know, you know, you're looking at, you know, T-bills or T-bonds or leverages in different currencies and that type of thing. All that stuff is, it's a financial fiction in a way. It's legally there, but it's really on a computer somewhere. So it represents the ability to buy something that's needed, but it's out of out of hand relative to what the physical economy is. So what I'm trying to say succinctly is buy things that are needed. Don't worry too much about what the financial markets are showing you right now because they are inaccurate relative to the, the commodity sector. So that's the place to be. If you're overweighted stocks, you might want to consider shifting a weighting into something that's just a digit with a company that's at 200 times earnings or 400 times next year's projected earnings or whatever it is, and look at hard assets, they are the place to be and will be the place to be, in my view, and a studied one, probably the next five years, perhaps 10. Mid-tier companies are David Morgan's favorite place to play in the silver equity landscape but we've still painted them with a fairly broad brush. In this next section, we'll do a deeper dive on one exciting mid-tier silver miner and their late stage exploration project. Abra Silver is an exciting mid-tier uh, advanced stage exploration uh, company focused on silver and gold. Our flagship project is called Diablilos, um, which is located in the Salta province of Argentina, which is a very mining friendly jurisdiction. So our asset is really in the sweet spot. We have quite an advanced stage resource already. Uh, we just updated that back in 2021, uh, where we have 90 million ounces of silver and 1 million ounces of gold uh, located close to surface. So this is quite an advanced stage resource. Um, the, the project's been around since the early 90s and has had over $50 million US spent on exploration throughout the years. But importantly, we still have a tremendous amount of upside. You heard David Morgan reference the three tiers in terms of um, silver companies. So you have the large, large scale producers, the top level, uh, the mid tier, which is very exciting. Uh, and then lower down in terms of the discovery curve, you have that the speculative tier. Now, where Abra Silver is positioned is really right in that mid-tier advanced stage exploration category. Having a project like our Diablilos project, which already has a sizable resource, a proven robust economics through a PA study, and significant exploration upside ahead, truly positions us in that sweet spot where we have an advanced stage project but still have additional growth ahead of us. So when evaluating any project, uh, you typically look at three key factors to determine whether it's a high quality project. One is significant scale, second is low cost, and the third is long mine life. Now, thankfully for Diablilos, uh, we have all three of those key attributes. So this is already a project uh, that has significant size, significant scale, uh, based on our latest PEA study that we released in 2021. Uh, the production here is close to 10 million ounces a year on a silver equivalent basis. So that definitely constitutes as a large scale primary silver project. Uh, all in sustaining cash costs, importantly, are less than $12 an ounce. So again, this high margin here, uh, and importantly, this is a project that has already a 16-year mine life with uh, exciting exploration upside ahead. 
So again, we, we hit all three of those key attributes and there, there's no question in my mind, Diabolilos is a high quality primary silver project. 2021 was a very busy year for Abra Silver with lots of exciting uh, milestones that were achieved. Uh, to start the year, we were drilling our phase one exploration program. And so this is a program where we drilled about 15,000 meters, uh, which cost about $4 million. And so we were busy drilling. Now on the back of that phase one program, we announced an updated resource estimate where we added over 300,000 ounces of gold and 10 million ounces of silver to our resource estimate in the measured and indicated category. So what this means for shareholders is that based on that $4 million investment, uh, for us to add an ounce of silver in the ground costs less than 15 cents an ounce. Uh, and to add an ounce of gold was actually less than $10 an ounce. So this is really industry leading in terms of the discovery cost to add an ounce of gold. Uh, and we're very proud of our team's accomplishment. Um, now this updated resource estimate then led into an updated preliminary economic study. So this is also known as a PA study, which essentially looks at the project and quantifies the economics. How economic is it to extract these resources from the ground? And we were very, very pleased with the economics of that study, which showed that we have a robust project with very high margins, uh, high grades here. Uh, and this is truly an exciting project that will continue to, to advance and grow further. Uh, now, in addition to Diablos, we also have some earlier stage uh, exciting copper gold assets as well. Uh, and we're going to be drilling those in the upcoming year, starting in 2022. Uh, and for now, the focus continues to be on advancing Diablos, uh, discovering additional ounces, as well as advancing those other projects uh, towards uh, the discovery phase. Looking forward at Abra Silver, our focus at Diablos continues to be on drilling. So we're actively drilling here on this part of our ongoing phase two exploration program. We still have two rigs at site, actively drilling here year round, uh, looking to continue to grow the size of the resource. Now in parallel, the team's also working uh, on several other uh, de-risking milestones here where we're looking to advance this project from the current PEA level all the way to a, a bankable feasibility study by the end of 2023. And that's gonna be a key milestone for, our, for ourselves and for our shareholders. Once you have that bankable feasibility study in place and construction permits, you can then embark on actually constructing this project and bringing the mine into production. Uh, which would be truly exciting uh, for ourselves and for the people of, of Salta in Argentina. Um, getting to that construction decision point, uh, we're fully funded to, to achieve that, that construction decision uh, with our current cash balance. So that's definitely very important for our shareholders. We're fully funded to get to a construction decision here. Uh, and with that construction decision, that opens up a number of different avenues that can be evaluated. Do we build this on our own? Do we partner with someone? Or importantly, potentially uh, down the road at the right time, we could be looking at an acquisition opportunity where somebody were, were uh, a bigger player could acquire this project. Remember, it was the additional exploration upside that makes the mid-tier silver equities so attractive for David Morgan. At Abra Silver, in addition to the late stage and highly proven resource at Diablilos, they also have a number of other projects that provide that potential for more exploration upside. Aside from Diablilos, Abra Silver also has a portfolio of earlier stage copper and gold exploration projects. Now these are also exciting. Uh, as they provide additional discovery potential for our shareholders. Now, the one project I'd say we're most excited about at this stage is our La Coipita project, which is a very large, extensive land package encompassing over 70,000 hectares uh, in a very highly prospective uh, mining jurisdiction uh, in the San Juan province of Argentina. So this project is earlier stage, but we're actually gonna be embarking on the initial exploration program in early 2022. And so this is a very exciting time here as the La Coipita project will be our second key project in the Abra portfolio 
um, and we think it's, it's quite a highly prospective project. This is at the pre-discovery phase. So this is, you know, much earlier stage, but again, significant upside potential. So we will be embarking on the initial 3000 meter drill program here. Um, and we'll be looking to wrap up that exploration program in, in the first half of 2022. So this is an exciting new project uh, looking to make that initial discovery as opposed to Diablilos, which is already well advanced and moving closer to that construction decision point. After examining the two most exciting projects in the Abra Silver portfolio, it's time to put some of those numbers into context. The potential for higher silver prices due to the current macro environment is an obvious tailwind for silver equities. But mid-tier companies like Abra Silver can also be exciting when the market fails to price in the good news that has already been released. After all, what makes a good investment is not the good news that the market already understands, but the good news that it doesn't. Overall, I'd say Abra Silver currently represents a very compelling investment opportunity. Uh, as you take a step back and look at the macro fundamentals of the silver price uh, at the moment, um, I think we're very well positioned for, to enter a, a strong silver price environment going forward. Looking at the demand side, uh, we see significant demand uh, growing from not only sort of industrial applications, such as solar panels, uh, and other electronic components, but also at the same time, we're seeing rising demand from the investment community as more and more investors are looking for a safe haven asset to protect their, their financial assets um, as we're in this low interest rate environment with rising inflation. And that's where gold and silver truly shines. And that's on the demand side. Clearly, we're seeing a positive picture there. Now, importantly, on the supply side, there's clearly a scarcity of high quality primary silver projects ready to enter that construction decision stage. And so that's where we see our Diablilos project truly representing a significant unique opportunity which offers investors um, access to, to a high quality project at an advanced stage, um, which offers tremendous upside to a rising silver and gold price environment. talked about the PA study earlier, uh, which was a lot of work, uh, but we're very, very thankful with the outcome and, and the results of that economic study. So what that study shows us is that if we assume $24 silver and $16.50 gold as our gold and silver price assumptions long term, the value, the after-tax rate of return of this project is over 30%, which is a very high rate of return, of course, um, and the net asset value um, of this project would be over $475 million uh, Canadian, which on a per share basis would equal about $1 per share. So this is a highly attractive project, uh, robust economics already. Now, importantly, if you look at higher silver and gold prices going forward, um, if you assume silver increases by another dollar, gold price increases by another $100, the value of this project increases by an additional $75 million Canadian. So, which is as a percentage of our market cap, a very significant percentage. And so this is a project that already is robust uh, and, and you know, has very good economics, um, but you know, significant upside potential in a rising gold and silver price environment. Overall, with a strong balance sheet, an advanced stage asset, and significant exploration potential ahead of us, I truly feel um, Abra Silver represents quite a unique investment proposition at this stage. When you look at our current share price, the value shown in our recent PA study justifies um, a market cap of well over $470 million Canadian. And at the moment, we're trading at only a fraction of that underlying value for the project. And so there's clear significant upside ahead for us to re-rate to that underlying value that was shown in our PA study. But most importantly, uh, as we look forward, we continue uh, to have very high confidence in our ability to 
continue to grow the resource here and further unlock significant value uh, in addition to what was shown in our PEA study. So we feel this is an advanced stage asset. Uh, we're a mid-tier exploration company with significant upside potential. And meanwhile, again, on the downside, investors have quite a lot of protection given we already have a strong balance sheet and a robust project. The time for hard assets may finally be upon us as investors begin to reassess their portfolios and larger silver producers and the corporations that rely on hard assets scramble for new resources, companies like Abra Silver with proven resources in friendly jurisdictions might just find themselves at the top of everybody's shopping list.